It's my job to make you the smartest person in the room. And sometimes that requires us to talk about things that impact Second Amendment rights that are not obviously Second Amendment issues. That's what I'm going to talk about today. This inflation reduction bill by the Democrats in Congress will impact Second Amendment rights as I see it. Let me explain next. Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of the Four Boxes Diner, proud American gun owner, best-selling author, member of the United States Supreme Court Bar, and constitutional attorney. If you haven't subscribed to the Four Boxes Diner Second Amendment channel, please do so and show your love for the right to keep and bear arms, and please feel free to share and like the video far and wide. Okay, folks, this is not specific to the Second Amendment, but I think it's important for us to spend just two minutes on this bill, this law, that the Democrats are going to foist upon us this so-called Inflation Reduction Act, okay? Set aside the reality of it not going to do anything to inflation. But here's why I want you to understand. I want you to focus on one particular part of it. That is the 46, that's 46, the $46 billion that this bill is going to give to the IRS to supplement their current budget because they don't have enough money, apparently. So the $46 billion is going to go to the IRS for enforcing the tax laws. Now, I want you to understand why this is important to, as I see it, our liberties and our rights. First of all, we can only buy firearms. We can only exercise our constitutional rights. We can only speak out. We can only buy ammunition. We can only feed our families, and on and on and on, if we have money, right? If we have the ability to feed our families and do what we need to do with money. And how do we get money? Well, there's two general ways. One is, of course, you can go out and get a job. But remember, to be an employee, you first and foremost have to have employers. So anything we do in the society to punish private sector employers who create jobs for employees makes it harder for all of us to get jobs and to make money to feed our families and buy firearms and exercise our constitutional rights and the like. The second thing is for those people who are out there who actually are creating the jobs, the employers, the small business, and that includes you know, thousands upon thousands of people in the gun industry, whether it be small, uh, you know, whether it be uh, accessory companies, whether it be you know, small FFLs, gun shops, on and on and on. You all know uh, as much about the gun industry and the different parts of it, including the small businesses out there as I do. I mean, you all buy firearms from FFLs. Those are all small businesses. And this is why I bring this up. Why does the IRS need $46 billion in additional money for tax enforcement? Do you think it's because they're going to go after Jeff Bezos of Amazon or Elon Musk of Tesla? No, because here's the reality of it. The rich people, the billionaire class, the super rich people in America already have fancy-dancy, super high-end lawyers and super high-end accountants. So they can tie the IRS up in litigation for literally decades. I mean, how many accountants do you think works for Elon Musk and works for Jeff Bezos? I'm sure it's literally hundreds and hundreds of accountants and lawyers uh, in addition to other things they can go out and hire if they need to. So as I see it, the $46 billion that the IRS is going to be spending on tax enforcement is not going to be targeting the billionaire class because you're not going to win those fights. You're going to fight to the death and the billionaire class with all their resources are going to be able to, you know, thwart the IRS. And they can't, and the IRS is not going to target, you know, poor and lower income people because there's no there there, right? To audit somebody making, you know, a small, relatively modest income, what are you going to be able to do? There's not enough money there for the IRS to go after those people not earning a lot of money because there's just not enough money to get. So where is the IRS going to focus their attention? I think what they're going to do is use all this money to target the Republican base of small business owners, independent business owners in America, whether it be the ice cream shops, restaurants, uh, pizza parlors, uh, you know, hair salons, you know, stores, uh, gun shops, 
small gun companies. I think all these things are going to get targeted by the IRS because they have to go somewhere. And if they can't go up to the really big dogs because they're going to have unlimited resources to fight the IRS, so don't waste your money and time on that. And they're not going to go after the poor people and the people with no money because there's no value there either. They're going to focus on the great middle class of America, which includes a lot of independent small business owners and people that have jobs, but then they're doing stuff on the sides. Uh, that's who I think is going to get targeted. And of course, Guess what? That is the heart, as I see it, of the Republican base, because people that are in the private sector, people that start small businesses, people that run independent businesses, I suspect that they don't really love, as a general matter, Joe Biden and the Democratic policies, because A, they often don't enforce law and order. Uh, you know, it doesn't help if your windows are getting broken by rioters or criminals and nothing happens about it. It probably doesn't help with all the regulations they impose upon you that get you sued or harassed by regulators or the government or who knows what or plaintiff's lawyers. So at the end of the day, this $46 billion going to the IRS is ultimately going to be used to do two things. It's going to punish the Republican base. And number two, it's going to expand the Democratic base how so? Because where is that $46 billion going to go to? I can assure you it's not going to come to me, and I'm guessing it's not going to go to most of you out there watching. It's going to go to create yet another class, massive class, of government employees who suck at the teat of big government for their jobs. So those people will never vote themselves down a pay raise. They're never going to vote against big government because they're going to work for big government, and their family members who also benefit from their spouses, let's say, working for the IRS and working for big government, those family members are also going to be supportive of big government because, again, their income, their vacations, their livelihood is going to turn on big government because with that $46 billion, that's going to be showered upon, you know, thousands upon thousands, if not tens of thousands of new government employees working for the federal government who will be, again, a class of people that will vote themselves more and more raises and will always vote for bigger government, which means, frankly, voting for the Democrats. And by voting for the Democrats and electing Democrats, the reality is in modern America, those are all votes against the right to keep and bear arms. Again, just a little bit of connection between this $46 billion they're going to allocate to the IRS through this inflation reduction program and how it may impact our Second Amendment rights, including but limited the number of people that are able to sell guns because they'll be harassed out of business by the IRS, as I see it, and also punishing the Republican base, making it harder for Republicans to win office. And again, although Republicans are not perfect, I think it's fair to say as a general matter, they are definitely better on judges and better on firearms and better on Second Amendment rights than anyone in the Democratic aisle uh, in the modern America. I don't think that was true when JFK was the president in the 60s, but we don't live in the 60s. We now live in the 21st century and the parties are mostly aligned uh, apart on the question of the right to keep in arms and the Second Amendment. Okay, hope you learned a little bit something here at the Four Boxes Diner. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. And again, we'll see you again soon here at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up. Table 2A.